In this video, we're going to go through a question on conditional probability as it may be asked in the CFA level one exam. So if this is something you want to get right, do keep watching and let's get solving. So that's the question we're going to have a go at. And it's a follow on question from a previous one that I did in the previous recording. So uh, it's something you may have already seen. If not, let's just quickly read through it. A recent study based on tax audit data found that finding one, the probability of a small business owner making a mistake in their personal tax return is 27%. Finding two, the probability of a small business owner employing the services of an external tax advisor to repair sorry, their personal tax return is 60%. Finding three, the probability of a small business owner making a mistake in their personal tax return, given that they employ the services of an external tax advisor, is 15%. What is the probability of a business owner not making a mistake in their tax return, given that they do not employ the services of a tax advisor and it's that word given which I try to emphasize as as, as I was reasoning out that, that sentence which um, leads us to think about conditional probabilities. It's, it's a telltale sign that you're being asked for a conditional probability and obviously three uh, possible answers follow. Now I've already tackled this scenario in a previous question so you may want to go back and uh, have a look at that one. It was a question on joint probability. However, um, seeing as um, kind of I wiped out everything that was written in that previous uh, solution, um, I'm still going to draw certain things and I'm going to visualize the problem by drawing a table. It's going to be the same table as I, as I did um, in, the, in that previous question. It's a table where I'm going to visually write out um, like you would in Excel, I guess, uh, certain uh, phrases like mistake or no mistake. And over here in the rows, I'm going to say advisor as opposed to no advisor. And very quickly, I will also take the numbers from finding one and finding number two and put them in here, but I'm going to put them on the edges. So the, pro, the uh, finding one, the probability of a small business owner making a mistake in their personal tax return is 27%, meaning that irrespective of whether you've got an advisor or no advisor, this should have an R at the end, the probability that you'll make a mistake is 27%. And actually, the probability that, that you've got an advisor in the first place is 60%. Right, okay. And because something that I did in the previous video as well, the probability of anything, I mean, all things happening um, is um, any one of these things happening has to be 100%, then the probability of not having an advisor has to be 40% to make a total of 100. And the same over here. If the probability of not making a mistake in your tax return is 27, then the probability of 27%, of course, the probability of making one has to be whatever gets us to 100, and that's 73% uh, indeed. Now, the other thing we can do is fill in the so-called joint probabilities, which are in the middle of this table, and it's something that I did before. So let's just quickly, um, let's just quickly do it. Uh, Based on finding number three, the probability of a small business owner making a mistake in their personal tax return, given that they employ the services of an external tax advisor, is 15%. Now, what that implies is making a mistake and employing the services of a tax advisor, which is what finding three uh, is all about, gets us here in terms of our table. And we are told that out of all the people who have an advisor, which make up 60% of the population of small business owners, 15% of these guys still make a mistake in their tax return. And the way to compute this is to take 60%. So we're narrowing things down to those who have a tax advisor and saying out of them, 15% still make a mistake. So this is, the, this is what we use to solve for the joint probability of dependent events. And 60% times 15 is 9%. And from there on, you can just populate everything else because you know, well, in order to get to a total of 60%, you have to admit that therefore 51% 
of those who have uh, 51%, sorry, is the probability of having an advisor and not making a mistake, uh, the joint probability. So if you put 100 small business owners um, into, a, into a room, 51% of them would put their hand up and say, I employ a tax advisor and I've made no mistake in my tax return. And at the same time, over here, in order to get to a total of 27%, you'd need to admit that this is 18%. So out of the whole population of small business owners, 18% uh, of them have made a mistake and they've got no tax advisor. And obviously what remains here is still a 22% per probability. So those who've made no mistake and have got no advisor at all joint probabilities here in the middle. Now, what this question gets us to do, sorry, is it gets us to compute the probability of a business owner not making a mistake in their tax return, given that they do not employ the services of a tax advisor. So this is a conditional probability. And, you know, previously, in, a, in the previous question, I wrote out the, fo the following formula. This was the formula for joint probability. In the case of dependent events, PA given B is equal to P, sorry, PA and B, the joint probability is equal to P, the probability of A happening given B has happened, times the probability of B happening. That's the formula you absolutely have to remember for the purposes of the exam. Now, let me give some meaning to B and A, which we'll take from um, the um, wording of that problem. What is the probability of a business owner not making a mistake in their tax return, given that they do not employ the services of a tax advisor? Not making a mistake, so I'm going to say no mistake, that's going to be at A, and B is going to be, given that they do not employ the services of a tax advisor, no advisor. That's how I will define my A and B events. And I will do a little bit of transformation here. I'm going to say, well, the probability of A given B, the probability of not making a mistake, given that you've got no advisor, is the same as P, A, and B happening. So I'm taking the left side of this equation divided by the probability of B simply. What we're asked about is, what is the percentage of those who didn't make a mistake out of all of those people who had no advisor? So essentially, when you narrow things down, to those who have no advisor, that's the condition built in. Out of all those people who don't have an advisor, that's the that's what comes after given. So that's our narrow focus, you know, those who have no advisor. What percentage of those people didn't or managed to make no mistake? And the way to compute this is to say, well, let's use the joint probability of A and B taking place. So no mistake and no advisor. A is no mistake, B is no advisor. And the joint probability of that, P, A and B, was 22%. And see what percentage that gives out of all the people who didn't have an advisor in the first place. That's the probability of B. Okay. So this is P, B, and this is, well the probability of A and B, no mistake and no advisor. And, you know, if it was 20% over 40, that would give a nice round 50%. If it's 22% over 40, that's going to give simply 55%. And that is the solution to the problem. And it obviously corresponds with, um, very nicely, with answer B. But to put it once again, in a more maybe comprehensible way. What this uh, is asking is you for is, once you narrow your focus to just those row, this row, sorry, the people without an advisor in the first place, what percentage of them 
but them being 40% of the overall population, what percentage of them have made no mistake? And that's given as 22 over 40. Well, 55% of the people without an advisor still manage to make no mistake.